Hi folks, welcome back to the lab. So a friend of mine's got a pretty big clock. Three of them in fact. And he has a number of smaller clocks slaved off these using a system that Smith's made in the 1930s for driving a number of clocks throughout factories and schools. Anyway, you'd need lots of slave clocks. It works by having a master clock that sends out a DC current pulse once every 30 seconds and a number of slave clocks all wired in series that contain solenoids that advance their minute hand by half a tick each time they get a pulse. However, he's also got some other similar clocks that aren't quite compatible with the Smith system. They need more current. So he asked me to come up with some kind of way to adapt the two systems to play together without having to modify either of the clocks. So we need a DC to DC converter that works in current mode with an adjustable current boost ratio so we can dial it in just right. Since the slave clock solenoids are very inductive, we don't need our own inductor. Just a switch and a flyback diode is enough. But how to make the signal to drive the switch? Now, I know that none or more of you are reaching in your pockets for a 555 or even a microcontroller at this point. But firstly, I've never knowingly used a 555. And secondly, this needs to start up fast and run from as low as one and a half volts on its input and power rails. So a 555 really isn't going to work anyway. So I think a nice, simple, A-stable multivibrator is the answer here. Here's the schematic and I knocked up a PCB that I could stuff with parts that I already had in stock. I managed to get it all on one layer, so there's a chance that I could fab the boards in my sink. However, I don't have any photosensitive boards in stock at the minute, so let's see if you can do direct toner transfer using plain old copier paper and soldering iron. Well, that seems to have stuck. Let's put it in the special source and see what happens. Let's see what we got. Oh, look at that. Even the silt screen came out nicely. And the colour's a bit inconsistent, but I think I can handle that. Mmm, it's nice umami flavour too. Anyway, let's get these stuffed and see if they work. I like to make myself a kit of parts up and place them on a drawing or print out of the board layout. It just makes life a bit simpler, at least for the surface mount parts. There's not too many through hole parts on these. And they need some screw terminals so you can attach wires and hook them up to the system because the clocks all use screw binding posts. Right, that's one finished. Here is running, as you can see it's running quite happily from just under 2 volts and the pot gives me a duty cycle range of somewhere between 20 and 80 percent. And here it is driving a handmade one-off clock that needed nearly half an amp to tick due to a combination of different solenoids and a silent mechanism that's got much more damping than the Smith's clocks. Well, that's it for now, thanks for watching. Hope you found this mildly interesting. And if so, do click like and subscribe for more random electronics projects.